All right, Falcons fans, real quick, let's get to a quick film study on Marlon Davidson. I got it. I like a lot coming out of Auburn. I mentioned him on the show. What pass rusher do you think the Falcons need? Your tour gross models. That would be my guy. I would look for a Marlon Davidson. I like um, Jabari. All right, so for you Falcons fans that don't know, uh, my background is covering various SEC teams, so I've seen just about every game Marlon Davidson has played, and he showed out in just about every game that he's been in. Think about him, though. He's an interesting character to me because I see here at the Combine, he weighed 303 pounds. Now, this is a, a stark departure from, I believe, he was listed around 270-something pounds in the season, right? But he always looked like a guy to me that weighed more than 270 pounds, and that's a problem to me, right? But it's a problem, and then it's not a problem as well. I think this actually could end up working out in his favor, right? To me, Davidson is a replacement for the departing Adrian Claiborne. Claiborne will rotate in where Tack McKinley is, and uh, he served in two different capacities very well for the Atlanta Falcons. That's kind of a, sometimes a, a higher gun on third down, but a guy who could get after the, the passer and get after the run just as well. And he was 280 pounds, six foot three, 280 pounds. And that's exactly what I thought Marlon Davidson was, or maybe that's what Marlon Davidson will be in the future when he gets in the Falcons strength and conditioning program. Maybe they'll get him down to that. But at 300 pounds, uh, he adds a little bit of value to another position. All right, here we see Claiborne moved out past the nines, right? So he's working working with a very wide technique here. But Claiborne was very good with having his power scare people and almost turn it into speed. It's coming like a, re a reverse speed to power thing, though. But we see him getting out right there. There's a sense for him to get out the quarterback doing that, though. But Marlon Davidson playing in a whole bunch of space like that. Now, keep in mind, of course, this is a – this is a money down package there. So you're playing with crazy techniques and crazy spacing. But you see here, being able to get after the passer, that's going to be a must there. And it was it's funny to me that sometimes they move Tack McKinley off that role when he was a first round pick. But uh, Marlon Davis can easily slide in the Adrian Cable Claiborne spot. All right, see, we see Marlon Davis in here in a motorcycle stance. Now, check this out. Look at this space that he's playing in. This is usually where you would see Marlon Davis. He would play either here or or this next spot that I'll show you. But as you can see here, he can play off his feet. You're going to see him on a squeeze down here, playing out in a lot of space. Right? He's in a conflict of deployment here. He doesn't know exactly where he needs to go. Figures it out, squeezes down on DeAndre Swift. Saves a touchdown. Now you see him reduced down on the weak side, play, pretty much playing a three technique, right? So this is the position where I think he could add a lot of value to. So if you see him rotating where Adrian Claiborne is, then he could play also where Grady Jarrett plays, right, in a rotational basis. Um, maybe keep him a little fresh there, um, a series or two. But being able to just to play all up and down the line of scrimmage. So see him going against first-round draft pick there, Isaiah Wilson. Low man usually wins in these situations. He's a little quicker than Isaiah Wilson. Isaiah's unable to, to really reach and shield him off. You see him... Boom. Catch Justin Fields there. And you force a fumble there, too. He can really get after it on the inside and the outside, man. He's got a ton of positional versatility, right? He may actually does not have, like, a true position, though. That's, that's a little scary sometimes. All right, back out of three technique. They're trying to run all of these zone plays again, and he's completely blowing it up. Isaiah Wilson cannot handle him with the quickness. I said Wilson maybe was just too tall or something like that, just not quick enough. Trying to run QB zone here. Davidson stretches it out. Uh, grabs another one. Solo tackle there on Justin Fields for a short gainer. Back at a three technique. Across from Kendall Baker. On the outside shoulder of Kendall Baker. All right. You see him firing off the line here. Keeping working with it, right? Nice work right here. Getting skinny. Going through Trey Hill. Solomon Kenley there continues to work and get skinny. Now he's off to the races, rushing the passer from the inside, giving you some of the stuff that Grady Jarrett is one of the best in the NFL at doing. So it's always a good plus there. If you see it, man, he's listed as an edge player, but a lot of his good stuff is done on the inside as a traditional three technique. All right, now we see him lined up back out at round six technique. Going against number four pick in the draft, Andrew Thomas here. So you see him get to do work against guys like Jedrick Wills and Andrew Thomas and Isaiah Wilson. 
he's ready to come in right away and compete in the National Football League for sure here. But we see him get the best of Andrew Thomas right here. All right. What I like about this is kind of giving him half a man, right? Kind of give him half a man, convert speed to power. Right? Really lean into his chest, convert speed to power. Andrew Thomas probably has no chance of kind of anchoring down with Marlon Davidson with the type of power that he has there. So he just continues to drag him and is out. He outworks him really, right? Drags him enough to where you make him stop moving his feet. Maybe from held on to the ball a little bit too long, but still he just was unable to get leverage on Marlon Davidson. It's time to go for a ride, Mr. Fromm. See him working all up and down the line of scrimmage. Two-point stands, three-point stands, three technique. He can do it all. All right, same deal right here. I'm wondering if him being at 300 pounds, if maybe he puts on a little more weight and maybe he can play um, at the shade, maybe spell Tyler Davidson a little bit. I don't know. So much you can do with this guy, but you don't want to lose that athleticism to his weight right there. But Somebody needs to be on this kid because I feel like his weight will fluctuate there. But you see him working with Callan Hill, working out to the run there, staying with it. Right, He has a, a pretty good motor as well. Um, There's really not much to dislike about Marlon Davidson outside of wondering if he'll blow up with his weight. So that's that's always a scary thing right there, especially when Cat's coming to a little, little bit of money. He ain't coming to a little bit of money. He's about to come into a lot of money. So what would his off-season program look like and how motivated will he be in that manner? Hopefully that has nothing to do with him and he, he actually goes the other way and wants to prove himself. So think about getting these guys who are from Alabama or, or close to or a guy like A.J. Terrell who's from Atlanta. These guys are going to want to put on because they're going to have a lot of people coming out to see them, and it's easy for them to come out and see them, even though you see them on TV. Just a big thing having somebody in person like that. So hopefully that's a motivation for them as well. But, man, I love the pick of Marlon Davidson. He has positional versatility all across the line of scrimmage, so you can't go wrong there. Of course, I'll have the big comprehensive break breakdown on A.J. Terrell here uh, in maybe a day or so. going to uh, take my time with that one and really break that down there and let it have its full attention, maybe not on a, a draft day, all right? So I just want to give you something quick on Marlon Davidson. You guys should know what he's about. Um, he played in this area, so you guys should be pretty familiar with him, all right? With that being said, it's your boy Murph, the Underground King, top billing sports, and I am out. Peace. What more can I say? Top billing. Top billing.